Hi, I'm Orion, and today I will be presenting the work I did with Alberto Rodriguez on designing the shape and motion of robot end effectors. A lot of work has already been done in the fields of end effector design and trajectory optimization. Our goal is to make some headway into the intersection, which remains relatively unexplored. We've been inspired by the game of High Lie. In this game, the players use baskets, called cestas, to throw balls extremely fast with lots of spin. It's the synthesis of the basket shape and the throwing motion that allows them to achieve such throwing speeds. So, if we were building a robotic Hyalai player, how would we design the basket shape? How would we design the throwing motion? Can we combine the design of the two to get better performance? We'll model this as a simple planar manipulation system, which consists of two rigid planar objects in rolling contact, the hand and the ball. Think of it as a ball beam balance, except you can choose the shape of the beam. What's our game plan? We're going to start with a manipulation task like moving the ball between two points. We're then going to convert this into a nonlinear optimization problem whose solution will be an end effector shape motion pair that accomplishes the task. The decision variables of our nonlinear program parameterize the shape and motion of the robot hand as well as the contact interaction between the hand and the ball. The kinematics and dynamics are encoded as constraints in the program. The manipulation task is also encoded as a set of constraints, for example, initial and final conditions, or constraining the ball to move along a specific path. Sometimes we include an objective function, like throwing distance, to act as a performance metric. To illustrate the power of simultaneous shape motion design, let's start with a simple problem. The goal is to drive the ball along this path. While this can be accomplished by shape or motion design alone, we can do even more by designing both simultaneously. First, let's restrict ourselves to searching over the space of effector motions while fixing the shape. We'll set it to be a straight line. With our framework, we can find an effector motion that drives the ball along this path. Now. Let's instead search over the space of effector shapes while fixing the motion. We'll set the motion to be a rotation at a constant angular velocity. With our framework, we can also find an effector shape that drives a ball along the same path. Now, let's design both shape and motion simultaneously. Whereas in the previous two examples, we could only choose the spatial path of the ball, we now have the extra freedom of choosing how the ball travels along that path. To illustrate, here is a shape motion pair that drives the ball at a constant speed along the same curve used in the previous two examples. We validate our technique by applying it to various classical design problems with known analytical solutions. The rolling percussochrone and the shape of an involute gear tooth can be described as solutions to shape motion design problems. Our solutions match with the analytical solutions, giving us confidence in our approach. We've also applied our technique to the problem of finding a pair of gear shapes that satisfy some desired transfer function between the gears. Now, let's go back to our original problem, that of optimizing the shape and motion of a robotic throwing arm. Our goal is to throw the ball as far as possible. We use regularization constraints to prevent degenerate solutions like a really long throwing arm or a really fast throwing motion. Let's start with underhand throwing. Here's a simulation of the throwing arm. And here's a video of the actual throwing arm in action. Here, we've compared the measured and predicted ball trajectories to each other. They align pretty well, which gives us confidence that our solution makes physical sense. Time for overhand throwing. Here's the simulation. And here's the throwing arm in action. The shape and motion of the arm generated by the optimization framework seems pretty intuitive. Once again, the measured and predicted trajectory of the ball aligned fairly well. In summary, we have built a new framework for end effector shape and motion design. We have validated the framework by applying it to several classical problems with known solutions, and we have used the framework to design the shape and motion of two robotic throwing arms. 
In the future, we plan to use the framework to design shapes and motions for controllability and stability. Thank you.